Hello and welcome to the latest Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce Q&A. And I'm delighted today to be joined by Mark Dickinson, the CEO of Inspired Energy uh, Chamber Partners. So, Mark, hello and good to see you. Morning, Paul. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. So, Mark, just to start off, give us a little bit of background about Inspired and then all that, that, that you're doing. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I guess Inspired is a, biz uh, is a business that helps businesses um, manage their energy costs. So no matter how small you are or how large you are, um, effectively, energy tends to be the largest indirect cost for any business. And in fact, um, UK PLC spends about £17.4 billion a year on energy. And whilst Inspired isn't an energy supplier, we help our uh, business consumers effectively manage the energy cost equation. And we look after about 6.7% of the UK market. So effectively, we're looking after more energy than nine of the top 15 energy suppliers in the country. And what that wow. really does is allow kind of actually businesses to, to really optimize the price side of that equation. So assure themselves they've bought their energy as well as they can that they're accounting for it properly because there's lots of rules associated with accounting on this sort of stuff. And also that they've complied with the law because the reality is, is actually rules and regulations about um, submissions you've got to do, whether it's um, decks and EPCs for the smaller customers or, or whether it's uh, for bigger businesses um, doing your streamlined energy and carbon reporting. There's lots of things legally um, directors have to do for companies and sometimes they're not aware of it. So we help yeah. them with all that. So that's really the assurance side of the equation. And then once we've helped with that, I guess really the, the cheapest energy um, you have is the, is the energy you don't use. So the reality right. is that kind of we then help the customers really um, reduce their energy consumption so that overall they're bringing down the cost of that energy equation and, and kind of really making sure they're giving their business the best opportunity to, to be competitive. And I guess that's going to be more and more important as we come out of this um, COVID world. Yeah. And, and it's very much a partnership approach that you take, isn't it, versus a, a purely transactional approach. As you say, it's, it's multifaceted and working with, with customers, you know, in a, that way to sort of really do a, a full service, as it were, around all of their energy sort of needs and costs. Absolutely. You've got, you've got to be collaborative in this. So the reality is that it's a continuous improvement process. It's not suddenly um, you do one thing and that gets you the best results. It's iterative and ultimately evolves over time. Um, and kind of ultimately working with, um, you know, com um, groups such as yourselves and the Chambers of Commerce, etc. That, that really kind of helps in terms of making sure that we're, we're really reaching out to the, the kind of businesses in the right way and making sure that we're really able to, to add those, um, those values to the consumer for, for both the local and the national economies. Yeah. Now, you, you, know, you touched on uh, the whole coronavirus situation. I mean, what's the, been the impact on, on Inspired and also you know, what sort of trends are you seeing coming through with your, your customer base? Yeah, so I mean, look, I, I sit here in a situation where um, you know, you, you've, you've got a lot of CEOs of businesses, lots of businesses that are under just tremendous stress and pressure um in these current times as a business that looks after energy you know, the reality is that doesn't affect us in the same way from an inspired point of view mm -hmm. because I, I guess the reality is where we have essential supplier status for hmrc for example and also for amy so we, we we provide services to companies where which are actually keeping society going during the um the covid crisis so um i guess the other thing that we would observe from our own point of view is we we represent a diverse cross-section of, of the market. So literally every business in the country is a potential customer for us. So yeah. we, we look after around about 20,000 um, customers in the SME market and 2,800 customers in what I'd call the corporate, um, more commercial industrial kind of market. And um, in, in looking after those customers, obviously, we're doing that diversity across segments of society. So we get quite a good, uh, we're quite a good barometer, if you like, for how UK PLC is doing. Yeah. So in terms of what we're managing, obviously, our, our, our hospitals and our healthcare sector customers, they're actually using more energy than they've ever used. Yeah. Um, and same for um, food retailers, food distributors, food manufacturing, cold storage, all of those, actually, their challenge has been, we need more energy. Right. Um, and then effectively you go down to the harder kind of parts of the market in terms of the impact of COVID and leisure and retail and those sorts of things, you know, kind of really that's um, down to, to virtually nothing. I think that the key thing that um, 
businesses need to look at when they're they're thinking about energy um, during the crisis period. First of all, it was very much helping customers make sure that they turn off their buildings properly. Yeah. Um, actually, generally, most people's business continuity plans don't, didn't allow for the complete shutdown of society. Um, no. So for, from that kind of point of view, I don't think a lot of businesses really knew how to close down their business, their, their properties fully. If they didn't have a dedicated maintenance team or a dedicated um, energy management team, you know, they needed help and support of how to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we kind of sit there and I guess you, you try and help businesses to first of all, close down buildings. And then the next challenge that's coming now is how do you get them reopening? Yeah. And you know, kind of the, the reality is a lot of people, are, it's not just energy, it's also on the water side. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are aware of kind of like the risk of legionnaires when a, when, yeah. a, when a building's being closed down and that sort of thing. And it's going to be crucial that people go around buildings and actually do all of the right hygiene factors. Um, so yeah. if you're a small business with a small office, you've still got to be really careful to do these sort of things. Um, so it's really making sure that I suppose when we, when we see our own business in the crisis, we haven't been impacted too badly. Guys have been able to work from home. The workforce has been brilliant. Um, and effectively, we, we've actually, I suppose, learned we can be as productive from home as we can be in the office. Um, yeah. But that's because we have a fairly unique set of circumstances looking after the whole economy virtually in terms of range of businesses. And um, as I say, the, the focus from the customer we've had has been very much about how do you, um, how do you close down your buildings? Also, I think we've got about five and a half thousand sites on um, where we actually monitor for um, extraneous use during this period. So effectively, it's a great time for picking up leaks because if the buildings right. are closed yep. and actually your water's still flowing, um, it's amazing how many people don't know what leaks they've got. Um, a lot of them can be really hidden and it's, it's big money. Um, so basically helping customers with that. Also effectively, um, just on the energy side, monitoring, you know, kind of if suddenly you've got a spike in use as you build, your building's closed, something's normally going on wrong with some kind of automated switching process, your security systems, your security lights, all, all kind of unnecessary things. And I said, they're, they're the sort of things, aren't they, where it's just wasted money. You've got a leak, exactly. it's literally just, and so being able to, to spot that, uh, I mean, at the best of times, that's a great value add because you feel like you're, you know, you're, you're sort of, it feels like a, a bonus as opposed to just a, a saving. But, but right now when, you know, so many businesses are under uh, extreme pressure and so, you know, costs are always being reviewed, I guess being able to, um, work closely with customers and, and help them, not just with, yeah, you know, finding the sort of the cheapest energy that's out there, but how they're utilizing it um, is a massive value add, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just never more important than in these times when actually, you know, the, the whole country needs to kind of have a, a, a bit of a kickstart. And so anything you can do to, to reduce wasted, wasted money is, is effectively yeah. money you can invest in actually um, getting the arms and legs moving again. Uh, and getting the, the kind of businesses and therefore the economy working again. So, so I think a lot of, you know, you're always looking in these situations and, you know, we, again, we shouldn't underestimate the tragedy, but the reality, I suppose, is you're always looking for how can we um, somehow, if, if you like, salvage what we can from adversity. And yeah. you know, what one of the things businesses should be doing is really looking at the idea, well, look, if I'm not utilizing my property, which may have restricted me looking for that leak, Let's yeah. make sure that I do. Um, and you know, if I'm if I if I sit there and identify wastage, first of all, there's just a really good opportunity to track. And if yeah. you can track it, then can, you can do yeah. something about it. And, and that's going to make you uh, in a better position as we we come through and get into the recovery phase. And obviously, you know, we are all unlocking now. It's as you were sort of outlining, the the unlock is certainly more complex than the the lockdown, isn't it? And um, uh, that, that's that's clear in, in in loads of different ways but you know it, it feels then so you know it, 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 people who are watching this and uh you know are looking at, at, at pnls and obviously as you said you know in terms of indirect costs and energy i mean what's your sort of message to them i mean it's uh you you've got plenty of people who are there who can help and and sort of reach out i guess for a conversation mark would that be the right sort of exactly that you know and kind of exemplified by by partnerships with yourselves where effectively you know either either through um you know getting our contacts from yourselves or approaching directly um the key thing here is it's it's about making sure there's a value add these things don't cost a lot of money to start off and ultimately yeah. it's about it's about getting the right um the right answer for for each individual individual business recognizing that you know the, the answer is different for a very small business. Than for a very large business 
And I think the, the key sort of thing you start to look at is you know, putting measurement and control in, making sure that we're, we're checking for that money isn't just effectively be, being wasted and flowing out the door um, or through the ceiling or through the sink. Um, and when we do that, you, you then find actually it becomes a virtuous circle uh, because those, co those improvements can then be used to stimulate something else and stimulate something else. And I think the other thing is it's, it's really a case as we start to think about emerging from lockdown, um, I think for me, my, my personal view is that there is going to be a change in society. So what we observed prior to lockdown, um, there was a lot more focus on um, environmental issues and a lot more focus on effectively, mm. I'm, I'm not sure if you remembers would come across it yet, but the actual, the ESG wheel. So mm -hmm. you've got this kind of wheel now, which is a lot of investors are using to decide where they deploy their capital. Yeah. Um, and it's really covering that environment, social governance, um, all the facets of that equation. And um, we saw that happening um, end of last year and, and beginning of this year. And actually what we think is going to happen is it's not just a case of, right, okay, these things you can do in relation to your your energy and your water etc um, are going to be it's it's important and it's good that they're going to actually release money from the p l but it's also a case of what they're really going to drive businesses to is being able to drive towards that net zero carbon um, objective and that yeah. esg objective which we observe is becoming actually a prerequisite to get access to capital yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you said, I mean, really the last 12 months, you know, kind of increasing that, that's just risen up the agenda. And I think there's no doubt this is going to be a green recovery, isn't it? And we're hearing a lot of the, the support that the government's going to give will have you know, so-called green strings attached to it. And, and, you know, again, I think down the line in years to come, we'll look back and go, that was maybe the catalyst that we needed to really turbocharge um, the, the march towards a, a sort of no net carbon, no net zero um, uh, situation. I was going to ask as well, Mark, if, 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 if I'm a business who, who reaches out to you, I mean, how, how quickly in a crude way can, can you start to provide the help and, and will the businesses be able to see some of the, the savings coming back? Give us a sense of the, the time frame that we're we're talking about the impact that, that you can have by sort of building a relationship and helping people look at their, their energy needs or energy costs. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess kind of, as you said before, it's multifaceted, but you really start off with the idea that, I mean, again, another consequence of the, the COVID situation, um, energy prices are ridiculously cheap at the moment. So even if your contract isn't ready to renew for another year, year and a half, actually there's all sorts of things that can be done in relation to extending that out of better values can yeah. you bring that value forward so in other words can you blend it rather than yeah. just kind of actually um having a benefit in two years time which isn't maybe too helpful actually yeah. um, um blend, blend, blend it forward but effectively that's a very quick process the idea of um making sure you do the hygiene factors um in terms of looking at um historical cost recovery so what you find in the uk is energy invoices have an average error of six percent mm. which is huge when you think about it in the context 17.4 billion um yeah. now in actual fact that those errors are not actually um you know kind of six percent uniform it's you know the majority of um invoices have no errors but the ones that have errors they're huge in some cases yeah. so effectively having the exercise done to check you haven't got um latent money um locked up through kind of um you know bad practices yeah. bad, bad things happened in the past releasing that um doing the leak detection doing the actual um the, the kind of the recover the cost recovery side that doesn't cost you anything it's all on a contingent basis and you can do those okay. things instantly um, yeah and then really what you start to then move into is okay well what's what's your business objective and the everyone's got lots of things to do at the moment restarting their businesses so they, they need to make sure they focus on that but as, as they're doing that if they if they are minded that actually they they, they want to be as efficient as they can um, and uh, release as much value as they can and they've also got one eye on this kind of green economy um, the green recovery agenda then actually we can do a lot of the heavy lifting on that so ultimately yeah. we don't need to consume the time we, we need permission to access their data but once yeah. we have that permission we're able to do a lot of the work and actually really just effectively um, right. project manage them through solutions rather than having to consume a lot of their bandwidth and I think that's yeah. another thing that what happens in times like this, actually, 
the the reality is that this, we're, we're all getting a bubble of work that's consuming bandwidth in our organizations and so yeah. the best thing that we can do is provide that extra bandwidth to deal with some of these things so that the kind of entrepreneurs business owners business leaders can focus on the day job getting that right but actually know that as they're doing that um, as things start to recover they're already prepared for net zero carbon and all of those, yeah. those different things yeah and that, that very much, I guess, reiterates the, the, the partnership approach that, that you have at Inspired. And I think it's an important message, isn't it? You know, when, when people are, are looking at the, the businesses and they're looking at how do we, we turn on our revenue streams again, get the cash coming back in, but also, you know, looking at the costs across the, the board, you're able to provide, it's quick, it's simple, you're going to do the heavy lifting. And it's that sort of health check, isn't it? And making sure that, that you're taking advantage of uh, current sort of market conditions and also I and mean, this is really striking I suppose making sure that there isn't wastage going on which um, you know just would, would break my heart when I'm sort of thinking about you know uh, ourselves I think any business owner would go you know stuff which you should be checking uh, and you just need to constantly do that because yeah you sort of see that uh, going out and you just um, you know, no one wants to be bleeding uh, money unnecessarily right now well, just um, just to sort of wrap up, it's been a, a, a fan, sort of fascinating conversation and really informative. But any sort of you know last messages out there for people who are watching uh, that you'd like to sort of um, throw out from on behalf of Inspired Energy? Yeah, I mean, look, I think I say we're we're kind of as a business we see a, across the economy and we see the different challenges that, that different people are having. The the, the key thing is to make sure that. Um, as organizations as you say let's let's make sure that we don't um, have waste going out the door because ultimately yeah. that that's that stifles our ability to recover um let's make sure that we have a um a, an ability to to really kind of take advantage of of the we're out of this adversity let's take the advantage we can in terms of the where the prices are and the, the kind of benefits we can drive in terms of the green economy and i think kind of the other thing actually which you haven't touched on which is also important one thing as we've been building our own kind of um, um, social values in, in relation to Inspired, uh, actually one thing we did that was really helpful for um, our employees on furlough, um, we actually also did a partnership with a, a kind of um, a business called um, called Switched, which basically allows us to, um, for each of our um, employees, um, they can they can generate a saving domestically as well. And what that's okay. done for us is actually we think if, if all about from what we've seen so far on the employees that take it up, if I extrapolate that out to my workforce and we've got about 500 people, it's actually around about 150K of benefit to the employees directly in relation Brilliant. to what they're getting. Um, so I think kind of remember at this time, it's about your business. It's about coming back, but also because we've got more home, home working because actually furlough is still potentially going on till, till October for some businesses. There's actually, let's, let's also make sure we're doing things for our staff yeah. as, as well as for, for kind of actually getting the business prepared. And there's other things we can do there as well. If people want to discuss them. Yeah, no, well, so it's a great way to finish because there's no doubt, you know, that the, the people drive business, don't they? And are absolutely, absolutely. key. And, and throughout this situation as we've unlocked, there's so many conversations we've had, I know the best businesses absolutely focus on their people. Because you know, um, you know, without them, you've got nothing, have you? And that's exactly. a great point to make, and uh, and to say a nice way to wrap up. And you know, just to say, you know, thank you very much for joining us. I'm also delighted to have a, a conversation with, with somebody who's got as much, if not more, uh, bright green in the background as I have. So uh, I think we've <laughs> we've, ma we've matched the colour scheme as well, there, Mark, haven't we? I, I, absolutely, I painted the wall specially. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mark great Dickinson from Inspired Energy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.